In this video, we'll explore the topics and concepts that will be covered in the experiments which accompany the QNET DC motor control trainer. The experiments cover topics of modeling a DC motor, PID control, position control, speed control, and disturbance rejection. Using the QNET DC motor control trainer with NI LabVIEW, we can introduce and investigate real-world applications of these topics applying theory to simulation and experimentation. The first topic we'll explore is DC motor modeling. Modeling and model validation is used in many places in industry, like in the manufacturing industry, to ensure that a part has been produced within allowable tolerances. DC motor modeling is investigated in the first experiment using a bump test, which is a simple test based on the step response of a stable system. Here, we can see our input signal, and above, we can see the measured response and the simulated response using our modeling parameters. In the bump test, a specific step input is given to the system so that we can measure its response. We can then perform measurements on our response graphs and use those values to calculate our model parameters. After that, we can fine-tune our parameters to get our measured and simulated responses to coincide. This is how we validate our model. Comparing our modeled response with the actual response, we can determine if our model represents our motor's response accurately. In the speed control experiment, we're first introduced to the concept of PID control. PID control is used in a wide array of industries, and speed control specifically is used extensively in transportation and electronics. PID control uses feedback to make corrective actions based on an error value, which is the difference between the desired and actual value. In the case of this experiment, we're controlling the speed, and so the difference between the reference speed plot and the measured speed plot is our error value. There are three components in PID control, proportional, integral, and derivative. Proportional control corrects for the current error, integral control corrects for accumulated error, and derivative control attempts to correct a predicted future error. During this experiment, we'll be performing speed control using only the proportional factor and the integral factor. We can change the contributions of each factor to our control system by modifying our control parameters. We'll be investigating the proportional gain as well as the integral gain to observe their effects on the characteristics of our response graph. We notice that two of the main characteristics of our response graph are the peak time and the overshoot. The peak time is a measure of how long it takes after the change in the reference signal until the motor reaches its maximum speed and the overshoot is how far above its reference signal the motor goes. We can see these components on our measured speed graph. We also notice that when the reference signal switches from low to high, the motor accelerates quickly and then has to decelerate a bit to reach the desired speed. This is because of the overshoot. In the position control experiment, we continue using PID control, but in this case, we're controlling the position of the motor as opposed to the speed of the motor. Position control is used in a large number of robotics applications, including automated assembly lines. Using a square wave to define a position, we focus on the proportional and derivative components to create a PD controller. We examine the effects of changing the proportional gain and derivative gain on our response graph. After qualitatively analyzing the effects of our proportional and derivative gains, we use a physical model to determine what the gain should be and what the peak time and overshoot will be. Using our calculated gains, we can measure our peak time and overshoot and compare them with values that we calculated for our model. This is a similar model validation process to what was used during the bump test. Finally, we examine the response of a steady state system to a disturbance. When a system which has reached equilibrium is subject to a disturbance, it will behave differently when it is subject to PD control than when it is subject to PID control. In this video, we explored the topics and concepts that will be covered in the experiments which accompany the QNET DC motor control trainer. The topics of interest include modeling a DC motor, 
PID control, position control, speed control, and disturbance rejection.